my name is Mariana Martinez Peck, uh, and I work as a software engineer at Incentations. Um, um, today, I will gonna talk about this talk, which is uh, behind the scenes, the making of the bus platform. And um, if, if you know, Incentations is uh, the company that developed this uh, bus platform, which was previously known as BA Smalltalk, and before that it was Visual Age Smalltalk. Um, so if you are not a, a vast or institution customer, uh, don't worry. I hope you can still learn something today. Uh, mostly I would like for you to, to see how a, a mature system like uh, BAST is developed. I think there are a few interesting things in there. Um, but unfortunately, I won't have the time to focus on every detail on how we do the things. So mostly I will be able to focus on what we do and why we do it. Okay. But I will be all the week here in, in the conference. So you can always come talk to me. If you have uh, questions about some of the details of what I will show, I can always explain you uh, uh, with more details because otherwise I would need the uh, three days presentation to explain everything. Okay, so the agenda is as follows. We will start with first with a very quick uh, overview of the bus platform, uh, where I will try to show you how big it is and how complex it, it could be. And then we will see a little bit of some of the uh, standards that we do internally at the presentations to code in, in the bus platform. Uh, how do we test it? How do we build it? Uh, about documentation. Uh, and then uh, a conclusion at the end uh, with um, Q&A that you, if, if, if you have questions. Um, so regarding the um, this vast uh, overview, uh, the first thing I wanted to explain to you is that there are uh, multi components on, of, uh, on BAST. It's not just the small talk side. There are multiple components that compose what the bus platform is. So for example, we have the, we have the small talk side, but, all, but also we have the virtual machine. We have a lot of internal tests. Uh, we have a lot of uh, scripts to build the product. We have uh, installers that we have to make. We have documentation, migration guides, and many other supplementary materials. So all of these and, and more things compose the total project of, of, the, of, of the bus platform. So and now I would like to give you a quick uh, summary of the three uh, first ones, which are maybe the biggest ones. Uh, so on the small talk side, you know, if you compare with another language, uh, most of the times the provider uh, of that language usually just implement that language. In our case, with small talk, we also implement a lot of additional things, like for example, the IDE which is not the same with other languages, where the IDE is developed by another company. So here we, we develop the base Smalltalk language implementation, you know, the, just the, the language itself. All the libraries and frameworks that we will on top, of, on top of that. We have the IDE, the graphical user interface, all the tooling, again, all the tooling is not uh, available in other languages. It's, like, it's developed separately. In the case of BAST, we develop all of this all together. And to give you some numbers, uh, for example, uh, right now, the amount of application that we ship with BAST, application is what other language, what other dialects call packages, okay? So we maintain around 1,400 packages, which represent around 13,000 classes, around 200,000 uh, methods, which represent around a million and 150 lines of code. And just that is just for the small talk side. If we then analyze the virtual machine, we also have a lot of subcomponents. Like the virtual machine is the interpreter, the memory manager and garbage collector, the chat in time compiler and the polymorphic inline cache, the Unicode support, OS process, and many other parts of, of the virtual machine. So again, it's, it's a huge part. The, the virtual machine composed 
of a lot of uh, internal details. Um, to give you some numbers as well for the virtual machine, uh, most of it is developed in C. So that's why you could see most of the code it's uh, in C, but we also have, I mean, C and C++. But we also have a lot of Rust, for example, that we use uh, for our Unicode support, uh, and some assembly uh, and a couple of other things. So you can see it's around uh, another uh, 200,000 uh, lines of code for, for the virtual machine. Then, then we have a test, like uh, uh, we have a very big uh, test uh, suite that we use to test our product. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about S-unit test, because as I will mention later, we have other type of tests, but just the S-unit ones, we are talking about 20,000 unit tests that we have, which are around another 160, 100,000 lines of code. So all in all, what I want to say is that uh, we have around a million and a half lines of code just for a small talk, the virtual machine, and some of the tests. So that's uh, it's not a small project. It's a really uh, large project. Uh, and if you consider that VAS has been around for 30 years, uh, maintaining uh, and continue developing that is, is a challenge. And we will see the recent thing that we have been doing some are recent and some has been forever uh, to 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 continue uh, evolving and 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 uh, with this complexity that that I am showing. So <clears throat> now we are going to start with this kind of uh, uh, process. We, we will start first with coding, then we go to testing, building, etc. So for each kind of a step, we have some uh, coding. Uh, in this case, it's coding standards. Uh, which are like internal um, standards that, that we use at the company. We started doing this uh, a couple of years ago. And the idea is to help uh, document the various standards and the tools that we use uh, to uh, increase the code quality uh, in our product um, for both existing code and new code. Of course, uh, these standards will evolve over time, just as the source code does, correct? Now, uh, you could tell that uh, not all the code of BAS currently reflect these standards, because it's not easy to apply all of the standards that I will show to the one million and a half lines of code. But all new code and all the changes to old code are now satisfying these new standards that I will be talking along this, this presentation. So the first, all of this will be about coding. So the first thing we do when we code in Bust and when you're developing, it's to consider whether a method should be private or public. And you may think this is a, you know, a, a small detail, but for us it is not. This is really, really important. Not only because the, the public API is what the user is, is expected to use, but it's because uh, we need to, to, to give our customers an easy upgrade for, for our customers. They need, to, they, need, they, they need to have an easy way to update to a new version of the product. So that means that when we make changes to public methods, we try to minimize those. But if we do, if we change public methods, then we need to add those uh, methods in what we call the migration guide. The migration guide is a document where we describe why we change why we change this public method, what was the reason, and what is the replacement, what's the action, what's what they should do. So at the end, uh, what we need to do is to find a balance between public methods, uh, sorry, find a balance between the, the necessary evolution, because we need to evolve the code, the code needs to have modifications, but also the business reality that we, we cannot just break backward compatibility and leave our customers behind. So again, this is very important because uh, public methods, we don't want to change that much. Uh, and private methods, we are more flexible to, to change that easily. Uh, the code formatting. So again, the code developed by instantiations should have a unified formatting layout for our customers to see. We don't want to have a 
random formatting along the, the, the product. And so we have uh, settled on using the default formatting for every code that we submit. And why we use the default? Well, because uh, formatting is subject to uh, people's opinions. There is, we can argue and we'll be the whole day arguing which formatting is better. So what we did is just we stick with the default uh, and that's it. We won't uh, discuss it anymore. And one of the goals that we would like to see is that we can differ uh, each other's code, I mean, from the team, and you should not be able to see any formatting difference. Uh, that's something that we want to, uh, to aim. Another thing that we do is uh, uh, put really good uh, method comments. Uh, and I know there are some people in the audience that uh, no, method comments are not necessary. Good code should be self-explanatory. But uh, we believe that um, at least for public methods, uh, sometimes uh, a, a good uh, description, some explanation about the arguments, uh, the answer, that the, the, the method uh, answers the, the deceptions that could be raised, some examples, I think like that could be uh, included in, in a good uh, method comment. Um, something we have also uh, done, which is a, a kind of a bonus, is that we have tests that automatically extracts the examples of the method of the, of the, of the comments and runs them. So that way we have tests that that confirm that all of our examples are working. So, and that's part of, uh, I mean, it's a side effect, a cool side effect of, of this, that we have always have working examples. Uh, we also have uh, application comments or class comments. Uh, class comments are common in other dialects. Application comments is not something I have seen very frequently in other dialects, but it's cool because methods are good, I mean, Method comments are good, but it's hard to give the big picture in, in, in a method comment. So with the application comments, uh, you can give that bigger picture. Uh, you can give a sense of the classic properties that led all of those classes to be grouped together in that package. Uh, class comments also should describe the object's purpose and other uh, interesting details that may have. And again, the same thing, we can extract the ex examples and be sure they always run uh, with tests. So I, again, I think having comments for this bigger picture at, at this level are, are usually useful. Another thing we, we do is uh, that every, it, this is simple, uh, every method should belong to a category or protocol, uh, depending who you call it. Uh, in BAST, actually a method can be in multiple categories, but that's uh, a small detail but it's something that we do, we categorize everything. We run uh, a lint checker, so we run code critics uh, against uh, our code uh, to detect uh, potential bugs or, or unnecessary code or whatever. So we do that, uh, and the goal is obviously to improve uh, the, the code quality of, of BATS uh, itself. We also uh, do coverage analysis. So we use uh, the, the tool that we also ship with the product to, to coverage ourselves. Uh, this helps us um, build confidence that what we have developed is working code. Uh, it gives a possible measure of how effective your test suite is. Uh, and finally, at this point, you, you probably, all of you already heard that if code doesn't get exercised, it's assumed to be broken. So that's why we try to have uh, uh, as, as much coverage uh, as possible. And finally, the last thing we do when we are developing is uh, we do performance profiling. Uh, and this is very important because the bus platform is uh, at the bottom of the application stack of our customers. And so it should be as efficient uh, as possible, right? So all that was all the all the all the all the standards, all the uh, all the guidelines that that we do when we develop BAST. Now I would like to talk a little bit about when we test 
bust, which is uh, another uh, challenge. So the first thing to mention is that we have multiple types of tests. I already talked about the huge S-unit test suite that we have with 20,000 tests. But aside from that, we also have virtual machine tests. We have what we call IBT, which is uh, installation verification test. And this is pretty cool because, you know, Vast has installers for Windows and for Linux. So these tests run the installers and check that uh, the files were included in a, in a given directory with a given file permissions and, you know, all that kind of verification that the installation uh, went okay. Uh, and then, of course, we have some manual uh, tests that we have to do every in a while, some regression testing that... Um, uh, it needs some human to do and evaluate. For example, we have had uh, issues with high DPI support where you need a, a human to visually see if uh, the things look correct with certain high DPI configuration, for example. So there are still some manual tests out there. So imagine all those tests that I just mentioned, and, no, and now all those tests need to be run on all these different aspects of the platform that we support. For example, we support multiple operating systems like Linux and Windows. We support multiple CPU architectures like Intel x86, Intel x64, ARM v7, which is the, the ARM 32-bit, ARM v8, which is the ARM 64-bit. We have different screen uh, depth, like we have high DPI and non-high DPI screens with multiple scaling factors. We have uh, a lot of, uh, there are Linux variations, like um, some may have a, a dev installer, some other, we have RPM installers. We have uh, Linux that are desktop and some that are server. Uh, we have different uh, graphical user interface for Linux, like uh, KDE or Genome, etc. And then the same thing for Windows. We have Windows Server, we have uh, with, uh, Windows desktop, or things like that. So. Those are all the platforms, a combination that we, sh that we must test, all the tests that I previously explained. And then in addition, BAST has multiple installation, in installation options. So when you install BAST, you can decide which components of BAST to install, which will be either just the client, but without the MB manager, it could be just the MB manager, or it could be standalone, which is both, basically. So depending on what you install is what, what you get. And some tests apply to a given type of, of installation and some other tests apply to other to the other uh, options. Uh, in, there is also multiple, uh, actually two types of uh, bust images. So when you are uh, to create a development image in bust, you have two options. You can either choose a base image or a full image. Uh, so that means that we have another combination, one, one extra combination is the base and the full image. So all in all, we have so many testing combinations because we have multiple te type of tests. We have multiple platforms to test on. We have multiple installers and multiple uh, image types. So all of that is a challenge. Uh, and that's why we have been improving our uh, build system to automatically test. And we'll see this in, in, a, in a little bit later. But we, we are automating this uh, as much as, as possible. Now to talk just a little bit about uh, the build process. Uh, what do I mean by, by build? So if you take any product, such as, I don't know, Chrome, and you go to the about and you see the version, you will see that it, it has a given build version. Well, the same applies for BAST. What we do, our normal process is that BAST engineers submit some code to some kind of internal repository. And then every, in a while, we do what is called a build, which is basically take those changes, merge them into the baseline and uh, make uh, a build, which is basically make the installers make the images and, and, and go through all, all that process. So basically it means first 
we build the small talk images with those new changes that we have submitted. We create the installers with, with, with this internal build. We create what's called the random distribution, uh, which is uh, what our customers use for deploying. So this, this is kind of a, a special, it's not an installer, it's just a, a, a zip that is just a, a thing that is ready to be used for deployment. Um, and then after we have made the build, we run the test. We have we run the automatic tests, uh, which are so far the installation verification test, the IBT, and the S unit ones. So we run all those tests as soon as the build finishes, and then we run benchmarks. So uh, we have uh, a few performance benchmarks that we run again on every build, and we compare with previous runs. So that way we can tell whether a given build got slower uh, or faster. And this is very important information. So that's in a nutshell uh, what a, a, a bust build uh, is. Uh, it's, it's all this, this process. Um, then to talk a little bit uh, about the doc documentation, um, I think that uh, as a commercial uh, vendor, it's it's very important for us to have good documentation for customers. Uh, so something that we have, for example, is that all versions of the product are uh, uh, document. Sorry, we have doc documentation for all versions of, of the product. So if you want to go back to BAST version 8.6.3, we have the documentation of BAST 6.3. If you want to go to the lattice, you have the documentation of the lattice. So it, we kind of keep uh, the, the the documentation for every release, not just the lattice. Uh, we also, and this is fairly new, we started to auto-generate web uh, documentation based on the, on the code comments. So we extract automatically the comments of the code and we auto create this kind of uh, layout uh, in the web. Uh, so it's good because now you have some cool information in both in the web and on the code. And finally, for the migration guide, um, this is part of the documentation, but as I told you before, this is critical for us because each time we make, and we try to avoid this as much as possible, but as, as long as we find something that would break compatibility or that will force the customers to change something, we need to add this to the migration guide. And this migration guide gives our customer a path forward from all the versions. In fact, so much that our migration guide dates back to Visual Age 3.0, which was released in 1995. So if you don't know the, the immigration guide right now, you have a pass forward from 1995 and to the very latest version of BAST with every change and uh, an explanation and an action for every change. So I think it's, this is a, a really uh, important um, uh, thing for, for our customers. And now just to, to conclude and uh, going back uh, to the thing that uh, the, the value is on our customers, you you may all be wondering, okay, but why does all this even matter? W what's the sense of all, all everything I have been talking about? And we believe that uh, software uh, doesn't live in isolation. Uh, it must move forward uh, to effectively evolve alongside all the system and platforms uh, that surround it, okay? And this presentation, everything I have been talking about, uh, outlined the foundation of what we call responsible evolution, which will continue to be uh, the core engineering priority for BAST. That's uh, our priority, is this responsible evolution. And this responsible evolution is the one that has allowed our customers to keep pace with the inevitable changes of technology, things happen, while also being able to count 
on the stability of a commercial small talk system like the bus platform. And that's all I wanted to, to talk about. So if you have questions, I would be happy to answer. I'd like to know a little bit more of detail on how you build your images. Um, so for that, uh, you need to understand a little bit of a concept of a uh, uh, bus platform, which we call ICs, because the, the image gets bootstrapped uh, from some uh, ICs that uh, um, are kind of modules uh, you kind of build that image from uh, an, what is called ICs. Uh, and these ICs are in source code format or pre no, th they are binary, kind of a binary format. It's so you first you build the IC yes, and then you combine exactly. them. Yeah, and the ICs are built from source. Yes, we first uh, build the ICs and then we, uh, once we have the ICs, we can build the image. Okay, thank you. But uh, I'm not super familiar with that bootstrapping process, so. I cannot say much more. How many developers are working? Here? Yes. Uh, we have around 20. 20. Um, yeah. Do you have to be an engineer to... Sorry? Do you have to be an engineer to work there? Uh, not necessary. In fact, Esteban is working with us and he's not an engineer. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but, uh, you know... <laughs> Sorry, Esteban, I kill you. <laughs> Uh, but um, if you uh, attend tomorrow's uh, presentation, you will see that the, the team size could change uh, in the near future. So pay attention to tomorrow's presentation. Is Esteban a philosopher? <laughs> what is he? He's a great developer. <laughs> I'm not going to defend myself. I just wanted to clarify to... One, that IC stands for image components. It's kind of a binary thing. It's like a module we have. Yes, it comes from sources, yes. But maybe an image component doesn't change and another part does. So that's why. Okay. Thank you very much.